All right, so give me a thumbs up when you've written the learning goal for the day. Give me a thumbs up when the learning goal is down in your notebook. Give me a thumbs up when you're sitting next to someone in your group that you can talk to. your partners are gone. So how about for today, Katie? You want to go sit next to Lauren? And then uh, you can talk to your other two group members there, okay? So move back, move back next to Lauren, Katie. Katie. Okay. Back next to Lauren. talking about themes. Okay, we switched from uh, talking about how the character is a member uh, of a group. Yesterday we moved into themes. We talked about how common themes like we talked about how common themes like these can be applied to what? <laughs> she, she had to go back. She left her earlier class to go to the nurse. I'm sure she's getting her stuff and coming back. Because there's nowhere that Chloe would rather be than right next to you in English <laughs> class. Don't worry. She'll be here. So we talked about uh, common themes in literature, uh, in the world, and try to apply them to our books to, to gain a deeper insight about the lessons that are coming through what we read, okay? So today we're moving on. We're gonna think about, we're, we're thinking about themes again, but we are looking at how we can have uh, how we can consider group ideas or group membership. And another idea that we spend a lot of time on is that characters are complicated. So we're going to think about what happens when we have members of a group experiencing something similar. And within that group we have individuals. We have characters who are complicated. So what's it mean? Just tell each other what it means. What does it mean if characters are complicated? What's it mean? got an answer. What does it mean if characters are complicated?
Ethan. Um, my friend Emily thought um, because there's not really doesn't have a specific color, and the relationship between the friend and her are kind of strong. Okay, so he said the the character doesn't have a specific pattern. Okay, that's on the right track. But remember, in our earlier unit, we talked about traits. And we saw a complication through character traits that oppose each other. Right, so character traits that don't seem to match. Right, like when we looked at Harry Potter, we saw that you know, he's brave and he's, what else did we say? He's smart, he's brave, he's courageous, but he's also quite aggressive. Right, we saw that scene with him and Malfoy in the bathroom. He's kind of vicious, kind of aggressive. So we have these opposing traits that make the character complicated. Right? Another way to think about complication might be uh, like that line from one of my favorite movies. Uh, Shrek. Do you know Shrek? In that movie, okay, Shrek says that ogres are like onions. They have many layers. Right? He's talking to the donkey and he's eating an onion. And he says, ogres are like onions. Right? So, a complicated character is one that has many sides. Okay? Many traits that may be in opposition to him. Uh, each other. So we're kind of stuck now because we've been thinking a lot about how our characters are members of groups. But we know the characters are complicated. Right, so what do you guys think of that? How, how does this work together? What does it mean if our characters are members of social groups, but they're also complicated. What does that mean? And I, I'll tell you, today's learning goal is kind of a clue, a hint. So why don't you turn to, you, turn to the person next to you. Tell the person next to you today's learning goal in your own words. All right, so tell your partner the learning goal in your own words. So say it another way. Okay, see if you can do it. Turn and talk. So, while we've been talking about groups, we've been talking about groups a lot, okay, what I want to teach you today is that when we think about issues that affect groups, we can't forget that our characters are unique individuals, okay, and this plays a big part in what we take away from the book. So today we're going to look at how we can identify characteristics of our individual characters while they're being affected by group issues, okay? It's like you guys, you are all middle school students. Okay, you all have black hair, dark hair, right? You are all, all around the same, day, same age, but you are all very, very different, right? You are all unique individuals. You are all special. Okay. 
Okay, so we need to remember that as readers. And so we're going to think about Francisco. All right, and you know he he's in a group of I immigrants who are new to English. Uh, we know. I'm going to read a, a short part of the story to you. And my question is, what challenge does this present to him? Okay, so I'm going to read a part of the story. My question to you is, what challenge does it present to him? So being a, a member of a group that's new to speaking English, what challenge does that present? Right, so I'm going to read it and I'm going to ask you. I prefer to hang around Arthur one of the boys who knew a little Spanish. During recess, he and I played on the swings, and I pretended to be a Mexican movie star, like Jorge Negrete or Pedro Infante. Riding a horse and singing the corridors, we often heard on the car radio. I sang them to Arthur as we swung back and forth, going as high as we could. But when I spoke to Arthur in Spanish, and Miss Scalapino heard me, she said, no, with her body and soul. Her head turned left and right a hundred times a second, and her index finger moved from side to side as fast as a windshield wiper on a rainy day. English, English, she repeated. Arthur avoided me whenever she was around. So what's the issue that Francisco faces because he is new to English? What's the issue? What's the issue, Ibe? He doesn't understand what the teacher's saying. And in this example, what's going on? He can't even speak Spanish. He can't even speak Spanish with the one kid who knows a little Spanish. Okay, so he's isolated. And being a member of that group has isolated Francisco, or has made him isolated. Now we talked, and said anybody in Francisco's, from his group, in that situation would feel the same way. But where we see Francisco as an individual who is unique is the way he reacts to this situation. Okay? So, let's think more about the story. We know what group he belongs to, but who is he? So to figure this out, I'm going to think back to the story. And I know <coughs> that if I want to, where are we at? Where are we? <coughs> if I want to learn more about characters, I'm going to put on the glasses. Okay? And I'm looking for, I'm going to look at the characters actions, their words, and their thoughts, right? So I, I'm reading, I'm going to read through again, and I'm going to ask myself, what does Francisco do? What does Francisco say? What does Francisco think? Right? Turn and talk. See, if you remember anything that he said, thought, or did, tell your partner. Who is Francisco? What kind of kid is he? something that Mark or 
not Mark, that Francisco did in the story. Ava, don't do that now. Who remembers something that he did while he was in school? What's something that Francisco did while he was in school? He was bored in school, right? Couldn't understand anything. So what did he do? What? Well, he was bored, right? He, he can't understand. What did he do? What are some of the things he did? What did he do to, to, to prevent getting headaches? He would stare at the caterpillar. He would look out the window and imagine himself floating out, going to visit his dad on the farm. When Miss Scalapino would read to the class, in one of the picture books, like this, He would, he would look at the stories, okay, he would look at the pictures and tell himself a new story in Spanish in his head, and that prevented the headaches from bothering him, okay? When he plays with Arthur on the playground, he's a Mexican movie star, singing and dancing, okay? So we know that Francisco, he's part of this immigrant group that's new to English, we know he's struggling in school, but what do, we, what do we really know about him? Who is he? Does he sound like a kid you would like to hang out with? Does he sound fun? No? And he sings and dances? That sounds like a lot of fun to me. If he were here, I'd want to be his friend. How can we describe him? What's a trait in Bay? I didn't ask you to turn and talk to Darren. What is a trait of Francisco? Um, he is a very active person that doesn't come out with, doesn't have friends or anything. Okay, that, that's not a trait then. We could say he might be lonely. Right? Yeah, yeah. He might be lonely. Okay. He said active. And what jumped out to me was he's very imaginative and creative. Like he's found a way to cope with, you know, uh, not understanding anything. He's got the caterpillar. He pretends he's a famous uh, actor <clears throat> and singer on the playground. Seems like a fun kid with a big imagination. Okay? So what we did today, what we gotta remember <clears throat> is that even though we put our characters into groups, we must remember that they are still unique and we need to pay attention to those things. Right? Just like you guys are unique. Okay? You guys are similar in a lot of ways, but you're also unique in more. personality, your character, your, your likes, your dislikes, <clears throat> your favorites, okay? So, uh, as you read today, okay, um, I want you to try setting something like this up in your notebook. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take, uh, I'm going to hand one of these out. And this says, group-related issue. Over here it says what the character does, or what happens to the character, and how they respond. What happens to the character and how they respond. So, we can use the way they respond to learn a lot about the character, and learn a lot about how they change, and in turn learn a lot about the big ideas of the book. Okay, so as you, as you read today, try to do something like this in your notebook.